Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Morning Devotional brought to you by the Golden Isles Primitive Baptist Fellowship. I'm Pastor V. Vernon Eckleberry, and in a moment, I'll bring you a lesson entitled Prisoner of the Past. But first, here's one of the most requested songs from the Primitive Baptist Music Workshop repertoire, and it's entitled Cornerstone. We present it in a new setting with the words on the screen. So we invite you to sing along with this piece from the 2016 Sacred Concert, Cornerstone. Did you sing along? It's certainly a singable song brought to you by the Primitive Baptist Music Workshop Choir. Now we'll look at a lesson entitled Prisoner of the Past. And I've got a book in front of me that I read this week. It's entitled Moose by Robert B. Sherman. For years, the horrors witnessed by Sherman, during World War II, kept him living 
as a prisoner of the past. Robert Sherman uh, was born in 1925, died in 2012, and he established a phenomenal career as a songwriter, screenwriter, and painter. Uh, if you watch many Walt Disney films, you probably heard the soundtracks written by Robert and his brother, Richard, the Sherman Brothers. He had a horrible experience during World War II, and I'll just read you a little bit of that. The specter of an open trench piled high with wasted bodies, the stench of the ovens filled with completely burned human bones. In half an hour, I saw enough to fill my nightmares for the remainder of my life, and that was more than 60 years ago. That was during a walk, a walking tour of a Nazi death camp, Dachau. And uh, that stayed with him of all of the horrors that he witnessed during World War II. And so it is then, that horrible experience is typical of some who have had traumatic things that uh, have happened to them or that they witness that hold them a prisoner to the past. Let's think a moment about remembering. The Oxford Dictionary defines remembering as bringing to one's mind an awareness of someone or something from the past. Recalling joyful events from our past is a pleasurable experience, but remembering is a two-edged sword, isn't it? Memories of unpleasant and traumatic experiences can interfere with our day-to-day -day ability to function. Even though Robert B. Sherman rose to the top of his profession as a songwriter, the trauma of his horrible experience robbed him of the full enjoyment of his accomplishments. He was a prisoner of the past. Painful memories can hold us captive. They can haunt us day and night. You may know something about that. It should be no surprise then that guilt and shame due to significant mistakes and failures in our lives ranks high on the list of remembered things that create ongoing pain. But how do we forget? The short answer is, we can't. We can't forget the past, we can't erase the past, and we can't change the past. Our only hope lies in alleviating the pain of remembered experiences that hold us captive. And we can't do that on our own. I want to say a word about Paul, the prisoner. The Apostle Paul knew well the inside of a Roman prison, but his incarceration as a prisoner of the past caused him far greater grief than his time in the Roman jail. Even after Paul's conversion, he remembered his dark past. He was a prisoner to it, you might say. Listen to his testimony before King Agrippa. I'll read from Acts chapter 26, verses 9 through 11. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, 
I persecuted them even unto strange cities. So that's how Paul remembered it. And that's how he recounted it to King Agrippa. Paul never forgot his past. He said uh, later on, I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. 1 Corinthians 15.9 But there is a wonderful thing, a wonderful realization that it's possible to be a prisoner of the past no more. And that's because the Son of God came into this world on a mission foreseen by the prophet Isaiah. He came to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. The captives set free by the Son of God uh, weren't necessarily those held in prisons behind bars. Uh, The opening of the prison to them that are bound also means that he flung open the gates for the likes of Paul and all of us who suffer as prisoners of the past. Jesus said, If the Son of God shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Christ is the Lord of the past as well as the present and the future. He is the Lord of the past. When He enters our life through the Holy Spirit, He releases us from the shackles of former things. Here's the way Paul wrote it. If anyone is in Christ, He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And that was from the English Standard Version translation. Christ opened the prison door of former things by taking all our pain, our shame, our torment, our guilt, and our failures, in other words, our sin, upon himself at Calvary, and he buried them in the tomb once and forever. Listen to this from the prophet Isaiah concerning this Christ. Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5. Surely he hath borne our griefs, yes, all of them, those things that hold us captive from our past. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Did you hear that? There's how peace comes to us who once were held captive by our past. It is through Jesus, the chastisement that once we were beat up with in remembering our past, it was laid on Christ. And with his stripes, we are healed. So let's look now at the idea of pressing on. One never forgets the troubles of the past. You you can't do it. There's an old saying, forgive and forget. Forgive and forget. We can't do that. It's impossible as long as we have memories, as long as we can remember but through finding forgiveness in Christ, remembering no longer imprisons us. Who is he that condemneth, Paul wrote? It is Christ that died, Romans 8.34. We can live unshackled by those things that once 
held us in bondage, things that condemned us, and follow Christ on a pathway to a brighter future. Paul testified to the saints at Philippi, and this while he was in prison. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14. Paul wrote, This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before or ahead of me. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But Pastor Eck, I thought you just said we, we can't forget. Well, I'd like to tell you something about that word forget. Forgetting in the passage that I just read to you derives from a Greek term meaning to neglect, to no longer care for to disregard something. You know, Satan, the accuser of the brethren, according to Philippians 12.10, makes it his business to dredge up our past and imprison us once again. But forgetting, that is, to neglect this thing, to pay it no mind, to don't care for it any longer, to disregard it altogether. In other words, telling those haunting memories and all who might remind us of them, you can no longer hold me a prisoner of the past. Christ has set me free. Now, God be with you till we meet again, here or in heaven. Yeah.